The Hunt Zhuang Zhou was rambling at ease around the hunting grounds on Eagle Hill when he saw a strange magpie that came from the south. Its wings were seven feet wide and it had big eyes measuring about an inch across. It struck Cho's forehead and landed in a chestnut grove. Zhuang Cho wondered, What sort of bird is this? Its wings are huge, but it doesn't move on. Its eyes are big, but it doesn't look out. Lifting his robe, he cautiously stepped forward and raised his bow, taking aim at the bird. He saw a cicada that had found itself a nice shady spot and forgot about the exposure of its body. A mantis was raising its arms to snatch it. Its target in view, it forgot about the exposure of its shape. The strange magpie had followed the mantis as its prey. Its prey in view, it forgot about the exposure of itself. Disquieted, Zhuang Cho thought, Ah, creatures are certainly bound up with one another. Different kinds summon one another. He dropped his bow and went back. And then a ranger came running behind and cursed him. When Chang Cho got home, he withdrew for three months. Lin Chie, who had followed him, asked, Master, why did you withdraw for so long? Chuang Cho said, When there was cause to shield my shape, I forgot about the exposure of my body. Staring into muddy water, I lost sight of the clear depths. Also, I have heard the master saying, When you find yourself in a place, you'd better follow its conventions. When rambling at ease around Eagle Hill, I forgot about the exposure of my body. A strange magpie struck my forehead. Rambling at ease towards the chestnut grove, it forgot about the exposure of itself. In the chestnut grove, a ranger took me as his game. That's why I withdrew. This story, too, has a traditional Chinese title now used as a proverb. A mantis catching a cicada has a magpie behind its back. The proverb means, don't be tricked by short-term gain into losing sight of long-term harm. The meaning of the proverb is in line with a shorter version of the story included in the collection Garden of Stories from the 1st century BCE. There, the story is used as an allegory to convince a ruler not to rashly attack another state. But neither Trang Cho nor the ranger who pursues him are mentioned in that version. The dialogue between Trang Cho and his student is also missing. In any case, it is possible to read both versions of the story, firstly, as strategic advice not to act in a short-sighted manner. In the Chuangzi, however, the story does not seem to be primarily concerned with strategic wisdom. It has a strong personal touch. Witnessing how different creatures hunt one another has a profound impact on Chuang Cho. Shocked, he throws his bow away and goes on a lengthy retreat. Translator A.C. Graham speculated that the story depicts a turning point in Chuang Cho's life, a spiritual crisis that brought about an intellectual conversion. Exoticist stereotypes take Taoism to be about some blissful oneness with an idyllic nature. In the story of the hunt, however, Nature is far from idyllic. What seems like a peaceful, bucolic scene is suddenly revealed to be a murderous chase. The cicada relaxing comfortably in a nice shady spot is about to be violently snatched by a mantis. It is the first link in a merciless food chain that materializes in front of Chong Cho's eyes. What is more, Zhuang Zhou is not just an innocent bystander. 
he too becomes a link in the chain when he is chased by the angry ranger. The ease Zhuang Cho enjoyed at the outset is replaced by anguish, a sense of embarrassment, and eventually lengthy pondering. In the story of the hunt, nature turns out to be an unsentimental and ruthless cycle of eating and being eaten, reminiscent of a laconic line in the Tao Te Ching. Heaven and earth are not humane. They regard all things as straw dogs. Straw dogs were revered as ritual objects which were burnt after use. Similarly, nature subjects all things to mutual destruction without pity and exception. The question that Chuang Cho reflected on during his retreat may have been, how can it be possible to be truly at ease when everyone is involved in a cycle of living by killing? We are all bound to summon one another, it seems, and find ourselves in a place where we must follow this cruel convention. The natural condition of human existence is not idyllic, but gruesome. This makes the Taoist quest for ease a difficult task quite removed from any naive oneness with nature. In this way, the story of the hunt can be read secondly as depicting the harsh natural course of eating and being eaten. And yet, no one is killed or eaten in the story. Instead, it explicitly focuses on a different theme, seeing and being seen. Both parts of the story, the scene of the hunt and the dialogue between Chong Cho and his follower, dwell on who sees and is seen by whom, and especially on who, by looking at something else, fails to see that they are looked at by others. The imagery employed in the text highlights seeing as well. The strange magpie has extraordinarily large eyes, and Chong Cho laments that he lost sight of the clear depths because he was staring into muddy water. The dangers of being seen are emphasized in early Taoist texts. A sage, says the Tao Te Ching, does not make oneself seen. It is suggested that to protect oneself from harm, especially in politics, it is best to remain invisible. In nature, mimicry is a major evolutionary trick. Species take on the appearance of their natural surroundings to become invisible to their prey or to those that prey on them. Visibility is vulnerability in nature as much as in society. In the same Chuangzi chapter that includes the story of the hunt, a ruler is cautioned that his high profile as political leader makes him a target for others. Foxes and leopards, the ruler's advisor points out, only venture out at night to keep themselves out of sight, and still they are trapped because of their distinctive hides. The ruler's hide that exposes him to danger is his state, warns the advisor. In connection with this passage, the story of the hunt can be interpreted, thirdly, as recommending reclusion and withdrawal from public life. However, when Chuang Cho answers his student's question why he retreated for so long, he says nothing about shunning public life. Instead, he explains, somewhat obscurely, that he meditated on the peculiar connection between rambling around at ease, or yo, and the problem of forgetting about one's self-exposure. Like the creatures on Eagle Hill, when rambling around at ease, we may become absorbed by what we encounter. We follow something, establish a specific perspective on the world around us, take on our point of view, and thereby adopt a certain identity. The magpie follows the mantis just as magpies do. Chuang Cho, by following the magpie with his bow, is a hunter. When regarding Chuang Cho as a poacher, 
the ranger acts as a ranger, and Lin Xie is a student by following Chuang Cho. When we follow something closely, we define ourselves in this way. We display a certain form that can be seen by others. Seeing and being seen are intertwined. We are seen in terms of what we are interested in, what we pursue, what we delight in. Seeing comes at the expense of becoming visible. When we observe, we can be observed as observers. By seeing things our way, emotionally, morally, politically, philosophically, religiously, we build an identity. When we commit to a view, we exhibit a persona we cannot escape. When we are most comfortably ourselves, like the cicada that found itself a nice shady spot, others form a view of us. They evaluate and judge us, like or dislike us. Once we present most intensely our way of seeing things, we may realize, somewhat shocked and embarrassed, how we have exposed an image of ourselves to the gazes of others. A fourth reading of the story of the hunt is as a reminder. Being yourself is a fragile pose. The idea is strangely timely. On social media, people build their identities by displaying what they see, constantly sharing posts, photos, videos, and so on. What came as a shock to Chuang Cho when he rambled at ease around Eagle Hill is rather evident today when people spend much of their time in front of a screen, like you at this moment. People constantly follow one another and thereby shape and expose their own personal profiles.